Well, I will uh, just get started then. Um, yeah. So the, I guess, you know, my read on this was, you know, this is like, I mean, even if this wasn't, you know, even if we weren't doing Bayesian statistics, we would still do this chapter like in a regular old, you know, linear regression, um, you know, chapter because this is the progression, right? It's first simple regression with, you know, two continuous, a continuous predictor and a continuous outcome and, and um, yeah, so now we're, we're kind of doing a more realistic set of models uh, where we add a categorical predictor, which um, actually I would also argue that these are not, I mean, they're categorical, but they're really like they're dummy coded, right? So we're just saying, you know, location is one or zero, right? We don't have more than two, but that's fine for now. We're In the next chapter, they'll do more than two. Yeah. It's actually, <clears throat> with the uh, with the markdown with what is called with the package you use in this, it's actually trivial. It does it for you. So oh, cool. <clears throat> well, oh, there, well, yeah, and, and it also I guess it depends on how so how you would set up the reference or if you want to do um, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. So the 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 example is this weather in Australia, and I actually watched the first um, cohort because could not figure out how to pronounce. The names of some of these cities is like oh, oh um oh yeah well well I see I listened to it and I can't even remember what the hell they said but anyway so we have these two locations Aluru Aluru and Wallen Gong forgive me how I, I probably just really butchered that um so yeah anyway I um I I actually ended up trying to run some of this stuff just to kind of understand it more we have you know evenly split between these two locations. Um, we're looking at a simple, this is a pretty simple problem, right? We're trying to predict afternoon temperatures based on the temperature in the morning and then locations, although we do have access to more predictors than that. We just not, at least for these initial examples, we won't be using them, right? So, um, and these are our simple bivariates uh, scatter plots. Obviously, we have a nice, um, strong positive correlation um, with some kind of funkiness here, where we have a wider kind of things tend to thin out here. At the we have kind of it's a little bit heterogeneous as we move away from the the down into the left. But um, yeah, so um, right. So we're we are. You know we have our, our predictors so we need to um and we and and they pointed this out uh, you know, we, we have obviously very weakly informative priors um for um temperature at in this case b1 is um is temperature at 9 a at 9 a.m um so we're, we're basically creating sort of as good of a set of priors as we possibly can um and so, yeah, I, the, to be honest with you, like I still, I, I, I've been, I'm, I'm, I still need to practice more with this stuff. But so basically, what we're saying is we're fitting a model, it's a simple uh, regression. We have um, the, you know, the one of the things I don't maybe maybe one of you guys can explain this to me. But later on, we we we're, we're fitting models with and without priors, right? I don't know. If, in well, there's the, always, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, man, a little post nasal drip going on. And we always have a prior. It's just mm -hmm. that when you're using the stand GLM thing, right. um, it creates the prior, it, it creates these weekly informative uh, priors for you. You can ask it after the fact, what, what did you actually, what were those priors you made? But uh -huh. it makes some assumptions about the priors for you. Right. If you leave the priors out, it still works. In some of the cases, they just, they put in priors and they put in, uh, scale equals true or something like that. That also gets you weekly informative priors of a certain type. But if you put nothing at all, it'll still pick reasonably good weekly informative priors for you. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So um, I take it that this sort of like, um, well, I guess it depends on the scale of the, the, um, the thing here. And in fact, that's actually one of the things I never got around to finishing with one of the exercises that I'm really trying to like you, you it inspired me. I was like, you know, I was going to spend all this time over the weekend to do the applied exercises. And of course I did none of this because I have to work on other things, but um, yeah. 
I tried I to did start... go through those, uh, that penguin exercise you're looking at right there, 11 point, whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> it was pretty, I actually did it with, um, Pi, with Pi MC though, and Bambi, <laughs> just because that's my tool of choice and I wanted to keep that kind of sharp. So, cool. Pi MC is pretty nice. I've been doing what is, what, what's, what's, what's Bambi? <laughs> I, I've never heard of it. What is Bambi you say? is like the Stan GLM it's, equivalent for yeah. Pi MC. Oh, it's not as good. Yeah, <clears> so, so it's, it's not like, as good as Stan GLM, but. Yeah, so it's like you can obviously write, like think of like in one of the chapters, it showed like you could write the regression model in like raw Stan. Same thing yeah. you could do in like Pi MC. You can just define the regression model there. But Bambi's like this, like what Ron was saying. It's just like the same exact thing as Stan GLM. Yeah, yeah it's a little twiddle, you know, or, you know, body yeah. mass is twiddle, flipper length or whatever you want will work with that. So it's pretty cool. Mm. It was yeah. very informative to go through that to try to understand these things a little better. Yeah. Um, it takes some so, time, though. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Believe me. I'm. Uh, yeah. Time is. Yeah. I of got the that. essence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I uh, actually. Yeah. I, I one of the things I, at work now. I finally got like a, a task where I'm trying to like st simulate some, um, DCE models with hierarchical bays. I need to figure out how to use this. Um, all the stand stuff. Um. Okay, so this is our, I think we, well, the first model was, um, sorry, I'm jumping all over the place. Okay, yeah, so what's the difference here between the first model and the second model? I, I, at one point I understood this and now I'm, I'm not understanding this. Okay, so the, the priors don't change. Um, dang it, what was... Okay, so oh, I see what it. Okay, so we're what we're um, we're we're trying to figure out like uh, we're 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 creating another model just for the the second uh, the, the the categorical outcome, right? So, um, and we we have our trace plots here. All looks good. Um, and then yeah, actually this this is sort of interesting, right? So um. Anybody, I I do remember reading over this like what 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 how can we explain the, these the two differences in um, distributions? Anybody have any thoughts? Well, I'm sorry. What do you mean by the two differences in distributions? So in Figure Eleven uh, Five, density plots of afternoon temperatures. Um, what's what what's the story here? So this is the one where he's just fitting the, mm -hmm. the, the location only. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, really, it's just the mean of those temperatures in those two locations, right? Right. Right. But then, um, so what, what? What? What we can say is obviously it's not just about the, the difference in the mean, but also the distribution is obviously very flat yeah. for yeah. yeah narrow. Aluru. Those are the actual distributions. Right. Yeah. So yeah, is that on the, like the outcome? That's on the outcome space, right? Yeah. Or is that on the parameter space? No, that's on the outcome. Those, those are the, that's the, the, he's plotting the density plots for the actual data. Oh, right. okay. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. And the yeah. dashed lines are the fit locations. Yep. Right. He doesn't show the sigmas. Um, okay, yeah. And oh, then, now he does. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so, okay, yeah, so we, we kind of we walked us through this. Now we're, we're moving on to two. Uh, but you know what? You make a good point. If you look back up, you'll see there's the, there's the go down uh, where the two plots are. This is the posterior prediction for the, um, for the, for the medians, mm. right? So there's some error in the medians. I guess you could take this and then add on the model for the error. You would get the posterior distribution for the predictive Mm. Uh, predictions and it wouldn't look anything like those distributions up there because they're just gaussians they're not going to have that bumpy structure right right i think he talks about that later but it's just interesting to me yeah you could check that you're on the you haven't quite captured everything with this single location uh yeah test. yeah yeah um yeah i read this and, and now i'm like I, at one point i understood this like on like friday now i'm like why did i okay yeah. Anyway, I'll um, I obviously uh, with all things Ron, you're <laughs> you're guiding us more than you realize. Um, okay. So now we have, and this, you know, once again, this whether we're doing Bayesian or not. Anytime you add a um, a predictor, we give a nice, um, but more than one predictor, we have the advantage of 
being able to say stuff like, you know, um, not only does um, morning temperature predict uh, afternoon temperature, but when we add, you know, the location, we're saying when we control for the location, we, if we find some kind of relationship with morning temperature, we can say we can, even after accounting for the relationship of the categorical variable, we found X relationship. Um, so yeah, this was interesting, right? We have this sort of um, kind of a, a clear linear gap between these two distributions of, of scatter plot points. And so it looks like um, over, I don't know where these places are. I thought they're like, someone said in the video that they're, they're in like the desert or something and or like in the, the, you know, the middle part of the Australia, which I guess is very hot. Um, I don't really know how to deal with Celsius. So I, I would imagine 40 is pretty hot, but I had, you know, not super knowledgeable. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it clearly looks like overall it's hotter in Uluru and um, yeah, there you go. All right. So, yeah, so we, ha we have here you know, a nice representation of just like, you know, kind of like a main effect for location, right? We have two, two parallel lines that um, are, you know, for two different places. And if they were not parallel, if they were crossed or they were kind of all cattywampus or something like that, that would tell us that the effect of 9 a.m. temperature is um, potentially different. Uh, or excuse me, the, the effect of 9 a.m. temperature for predicting afternoon temperatures is different for different locations. Um, yeah, so this is what I was trying to, to do with the, um, the penguins thing, but I ran out of time. I had so many meetings um, yesterday and today. Um, so beyond um, prior for the, you know, in fact, you know, the basic understanding of the typical temperature and the typical day, it's, it's between 15 and um, 35 degrees. Our prayers are weekly informative. We simulate these. So now we're, for the first time, we're including, you know, two, more than one predictor. And um, so we set all of our, our prior stuff. And yeah, this was, so this was sort of interesting to me. And I, and, and I actually, I, I kind of had questions about this. So, so the first um, plot is, uh, no, is, is looking at, you know, different sets of 3 p.m temperature data right across locations and and all that stuff um but then i couldn't really understand the do, do you all understand this what i don't know so this so the um the blue the light blue stuff is wollongong right mm -hmm. uh aluru is um the black lines it's not super great but whatever yeah by the way i don't know if any of you have had experience with this one of the reasons i couldn't finish this is um this this uh function is now deprecated or it's changed did you have you guys ex experienced this i i've no, been doing this yeah. stuff in r I, 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 oh, yeah, i've, been doing, this, I've been doing this stuff in pi mc i r kind of broke me at work and i was like i'm, I'm not doing this right. stuff in Python. <laughs> well yeah it's, i'm i'm pretty much exclusively r so yeah to me it was like so yeah. this, is one, this is one of the problems with r in general is you know i mean well, well, everything all, like all, all all of the sort of software is you know it's like no, you, it's it's the yeah. same thing with python by the way i ran into a problem with rv is it was like oh i wanted to get a subset i use rviz dot I forget the function. There's some method on our, on the RViz objects that you can get a subset of things. It does. Oh, method not found. Like, why not? Oh, it's not. Even though the documentation talks about it, it's actually the development version. It's a new thing coming. I'm like, I know. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Yeah. No, I am. Um... So they either deprecating things, they're bringing new things in. They're already using them, even though they're not like in your computer yet or whatever. Unless you yeah. Get to the development version. Yeah. No, I, I'm trying to find actually. I mean, this is not really that important. If you guys aren't using R, it doesn't really matter. Well, but, I, mean, I, I, I might, might use it. Um, yeah. But yeah, no. So I think it's okay. Yeah. So added predictive draws. So like, yeah, I, I, what, what, um, you know, what they have is N equals 100. Well, N has now been changed to N draws, right? So uh, like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's really annoying. I guess that's, yeah. I guess that's actually better. I mean, yeah. but yeah, I mean, that's annoying. Yeah, and then also like for uh, later on, I'm trying to jump in the gun here, but like later on, uh, I forget where this pops up, but yeah, like there's a whole other function for adding like fitted lines. So if 
you want to yeah. add these predicted lines? Um, this used to be called something else, and uh, you know, I don't have any. I forget. But anyway, so okay. So basically, just to kind of go back to my you know little point here, which is this Aluru place, it's all over the map, right? Versus the Wallen yeah. Wollongong place, and so we kind of see this again, which is um, pretty wild, right? So. I mean, once again, my vision isn't great, but it looks like, well, I mean, there's probably like a lot of variability, but for both, but especially for Aluru, it's like you can have anything from a, 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 a pretty positive to a pretty negative relationship, right? Yeah, so keep in mind, this is the priors. So this yeah. is the right, right. fitting. So right, they should right. be yeah. the same, basically. There's no distinction in the prior between those two locations at all. Huh, okay. That's interesting, yeah. yeah. I think like with these, because I've, I've been doing also at work, is that um, these are also like really good with, like, because right when we're like setting priors, we're setting on the parameter, but like that's kind of hard to see like how it affects on the outcome space, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you plot it, then it's like, oh, this is this is like what yeah. my prior beliefs are on the outcome space prior to observing data, which is honestly really helpful because I was doing some of that work and I had like these priors, and <laughs> I looked at that when I did a prior predictive check, they call it. Uh, it was like so, so wrong. And I'm like, oh, oh. Well, that's really cool. So that actually was very useful for you then to be able to do that. Yeah. So you're, no, you're using this stuff at work now? Yeah. No, I mean, just for like, it's a small project, uh, just to, like estimate some like metrics uh, that we're like interested in about like we're selling, we have an NLP product that we sell. So we're like curious about like what will our win rate be for like this territory and stuff like that. And we have like a really small amount of data like yeah. less than a hundred observations when you slice it by territory. Um, wow. So we're, we're just like, you know, got people's priors, but I was like trying to model those and like, why is this all messed up? <laughs> and then I was like yeah. looking at it again and I'm like, oh, okay. So like, it, it's a good way to like see mm -hmm. uh, like what your, impri your priors imply about the data you would observe right before observing the data. Yeah. That's cool, man. I I, I, uh, I really need to get on your wavelength with that because yeah, to me, it's like until I start um, doing this stuff with my own data, it's like, I mean, it, it, I definitely, it, the, the information is coming in, but uh, it's not st always staying in, you know? Yeah. And, and um, no, I, I feel you, Ryan. That's exactly what happens. I mean, it's like you, you just, that's, I think that's what you have to do. They say like the, for anything you like look at, you forget like 24 hours later unless you actually do something with it it's Less, remarkable fast faster than that probably most likely it's but remarkable yeah, yeah, like yeah. a friend of mine told me about a, a book i should read i'm like oh that sounds great i like started reading I'm like wait a minute this sounds vaguely familiar i'm like wait i totally did read this book <laughs> yeah, i know i know but the, or, move, or, buy, I, or, or buying yeah. the same audio book or the same book i've done that <laughs> exactly. I've, I've, I've read i've bought the same damn dvd but i mean it's like yeah dude it's yeah. uh it gets dark when you get older. Um, <laughs> it does indeed. It does. Uh, I mean, yeah. So but you could, but so just repetition and like going back and doing those exercises, I think really solidify because it takes quite a bit of effort to do those exercises, and that helps yeah. make those neurons stick a little bit better. You still like a week later, you're like, wait, but what? <laughs> but yeah. it's not gonna be as bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so this was, but this so this was interesting to me. So like so we you we run the model with and without the prior, right? So we. Um, we run all this and we get, you know, with uh, the, pr the prior and then we go, we just update it by saying PD, uh, prior PD um, equals false. So I'm trying to make sure that I, oh yeah. So we put prior PD um, probability distribution is okay. So yeah, we, we. Um, so now you're turning on the posterior develop uh, engine as mm -hmm. it were. Yeah. 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 Um, so 100 relationships plotted. Okay, yeah. So this is now that same plot, but now that, to your point, like those that was all prior stuff. Yeah. Um, this is all just the actual data, right? And the, now we're now we're actually getting someplace where we're, we're using relationships to make um, yeah plausible yeah. models. Yeah, and like that, right? That's been like the posterior predictive. It's like pretty much right. We're like we've now simulated data right for our parameters. Now we're just like looking at okay on the outcome space like does it fit our data like reasonably well and like obviously with that it's like yeah that seems about pretty good um yeah. it's not like doing anything like wonky yeah. um so yeah <laughs> yeah it looks good um all right and then oh yeah so I, I i didn't really get into the prediction stuff 
um, I kind of passed this over because I wanted to make sure I covered some stuff on interactions. I mean, I don't know about how, how much do you guys have experience with interactions in your work? Sort of curiosity. Not, not really a ton. Like besides really? some under, yeah, some undergrad stats class. Something like I definitely need to just like dive into regression a lot. More yeah, I definitely use interactions before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, my background is in psychology and, um, so interactions are huge for like theory yeah. building stuff for us because, um, yeah, I mean, it's not just about, you know, it's like you don't really learn anything by just figuring out that this one thing predicts the other thing. It's like figuring out under what circumstances or for whom, you know, do, do these relationships hold, you know what I mean? So well, sometimes actually this is one of the big complaints about social sciences in general is, you know, we have underpowered studies where we have a lot of effect or a lot of predictors and then we throw in some interactions and um yeah super underpowered right? super underpowered and then it's 10 like samples 25 predictors let's do it <laughs> yeah. yeah well it's not even we're not even doing the 10 we're not even doing we're not even doing that we're not even doing the 10 samples we're just like looking we're not even yeah we're not even splicing it we're just using all the data because we don't have anything but um but yeah no so this is something that certainly Oh, and so like, yeah, what happened with a, a common complaint about like famous, you know, papers that are in the media from psychology or neuroscience is, you know, they have underpowered and they'll have like, a, a, you know, a bunch of okay main effects and then they'll have some interaction that's like, and once again, I'm using frequentist, you know, nasty frequentist knowledge, which I know is not appropriate here, but this, you know, just for the sake of illustration. Oh, you know, it's like P equals point, you know, oh four five or something you know and so now it's like it's, it's exciting because you know we have this significant you know interaction and so <laughs> i think in some ways I, I like i said i i need to do more with this um personally but i think in some ways this is might be for for the social scientists out there and the people that work with you know sort of constructs that are either through medicine or whatever um social social sciences you know, you want to kind of see how these different things interact to, to predict other things. And this is a nice um, example of a non, well, can anyone explain why this, what, what, what the, what, why this illustrates um, an interaction? Like what's the story here for these two places in terms of the relationship between, um, a, you know, uh, 3 p.m. and 9 a.m. temperature? I feel like I'm talking a lot, so I'm trying to put it on you guys. Sorry. Well, it just illustrates that the uh, the slope is the yeah. different for the two locations, right? Right. Which yeah. It's like yeah, for or, this is humidity, but then, yeah. Well, yeah. it's like it's oh, like yeah, modestly it positive, like yeah, kind of positive. Yeah. I forget so, which one's the desertie one. Which one's the desert one? W or U? The, the uh, I think it's Wollongong is, I, but I could be wrong. Ah, okay. Um. Although, Actually, it makes no, but it doesn't get that dry there, right? Um, this desert doesn't necessarily mean dry. Well, the, okay, so nine a.m. So low nine a.m. humidity would be like evidence of a of a of a um, of a dry climate, right? I don't yeah. know, maybe not. Um, All right, okay. <laughs> this is um, it's a good good question. So. Yeah, so it's um, it might make sense in the desert, like the times it gets super like here. I live in the desert, right? When it is humid, it does cool off, right? Um, because that means there's a storm coming through, and there's a lot of cloud cover, and there's a low pressure system, and there's a lot of wind. Um, whereas I know other places, the you know it's the opposite effect. Like the humidity means it's summertime, and that means it's going to be warm. And um, yeah, no, wait, that doesn't work. How does that humidity, high humidity, lead low? No, yeah. So that's so or basically no trend, right? So for the for the in a, in a temperate area, right? So that makes sense to me. That's my story right. for that. Hey, I like it. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so this is basically another way in English to say something about like this particular interaction, right? The relationship between 3 p.m. temperature and 9 a.m. humidity varies by location or is dependent on location or whatever you want to say, right? So, um, and that, you know, certainly brings in some other issues um okay yeah so now the only real difference here from above up above is um and by the way so, so out of curiosity so like because uh, once again you guys understand this stuff better than me so um so we're basically saying we want to um 
an intercept with um, a mean of 25 and a standard deviation of five, right? Is that what we're saying here? Yeah, that's like what we think that, like our we, prior right is that this keep is, in mind that, that bit is zero this falls intercept back. is actually at the is the uh, centered intercept. Oh yeah, because that's how that works. But oh right, right. Um, that's how stand GLM works. If you're right, using right. regular stand, you'd have to do some more work to get the intercept. Okay, prior. Let's see. Um, okay, so so now we have. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Like even when I see tables like this, I'm always like, "Where's the p-values? <laughs> you know, like, where, where are they?" I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, we see um, we ha we have a, a nice um, interaction Long here. Interaction, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, you're still doing p-value in your head. You're looking at the standard deviation. I know. Right? I know. <laughs> so, I'm doing it. I know, I know. It's like that's part of. I think this part of the journey is just realizing that you're going to be. This is just going to feel alien yeah. for a while. Oh, um, okay, yeah. So then now we have these fitted draws, which Would you said like. doesn't work anymore. Well, no. It just is all it is. Is it's just it now becomes n draw or n draws or something like that. I mean, it's just. I think it actually kind of makes sense, right? They probably had a bunch of people complaining, saying, "Okay, what does the n refer to here? Is it the number of draws or is it the number of?" I'm sure, there's other like you know things that could that yeah, it could okay. refer to. So they're probably just trying to. It sucks because now you've totally trashed a bunch of older models, right? When you try yeah. to like use this, but this is this is part of the problem with R and, and then Python as well. I don't, this is kind of why like I, I really yeah. want to use um, some kind of container thing, you know, like to to, to freeze, you know, whatever your your oh, system like Docker yeah. Docker kind of a thing because we've all had this. Like I, you know, I have a project that you know I've just opened up after four years. <laughs> and yeah you know, you better run it and it's just like it's just, everything just breaks you know and it sucks because i'm trying to get like my company i'm like we need to like get away from excel we need to get away from SPSS. we need to do some kind of open source stuff um and you know I, i'm trying really hard not to tell them about this kind of, <laughs> don't about, show them the warts <laughs> don't show them the warts right because um it's all it's all yeah. just peaches and cream here there's not a problem yeah, there's no problems. <laughs> but um but yeah no i think uh, you know like i think this is going to be one of those things where like you know and it can't just be docker right because it's like we got to get to a place where like i can say hey you know robert here's a here's a zip file with my project and all the data and everything you know you can extract it put it on your hard drive and like open it up and it just runs you know what i mean it's like rm i think i've never used it so like uh -huh. not at all but i know i think like isn't that also like the idea behind like rm yeah um, rm that, yeah no it is yeah. it's, the problem is is um well i i haven't worked with it that much but i've sent people stuff but then it's like oh you know um then they're using a different version of R that I, we didn't realize. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So yeah. RM, RM is only about package management or package. Oh. Package. Oh. Um, you know, it basically what it does is every time you open up the project, it. I think what it does is it's. Um, you know. It updates, or maybe I don't know if it, it, you can tell it to update, or you can tell it just to kind of sit where it is and not to update. You know, but it's it's a library specific for that project, right? Um, anyway. Yeah um okay so you know uh, obviously um i can't speak as well as to the bayesian stuff as you all can but i can say this you know whether or not you need an interaction actually in the previous uh, cohort somebody was like you always need to have an interaction or it's really important it's not optional i, I kind of disagree actually it depends on you know if you have the capability statistically to detect a, you know, an interaction if it actually exists um, and by the way, one of the really, really crappy ways that so a lot of, you know, researchers try to like tease out an interaction is they just get rid of the main effects and or try to just run like a simple interaction, you know, um, model, which is super cheaty. Um, <laughs> so that, that, that doesn't happen probably as much. Like going to the category of p hacking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So, so you have a, if you have a, a interaction between humidity and and uh, 3 p.m., you know, so, oh, we have, we're getting main effects for both of those, you know, to use main, you know, to use, you know, frequentist language. So, but we're not getting the interaction because we don't have enough people. So let's just throw out those main effects and just look at the interaction. It's like, oops. Oh, can't really, yeah, that, that, I mean, tip, I, I've had, I've reviewed for journals where that still happens and you're like, bye, see ya. Um, <laughs> 
so I mean, anyway, yeah. So I, I didn't get into th this example, but now we're looking at uh, rides and um, the temperature and whether it's the weekend or, or not. This was interesting. So for casual um, riders, they're doing more rides as the temperature goes up, right? So if you know, you imagine that's the temperature is just a proxy for time of year, right? So people are riding in the summers more in the spring and then they are in the fall and the winter um and that slope is I, I would say visibly different from the weekday uh stuff and then same thing with the opposite thing for registered writers i, I don't remember a little setup here i looked at this but i haven't gotten back to it but yeah we see a nice set of parallel lines here which means there's no interaction there's just the um you know, for both weekend and weekdays, we see, you know, positive relationship between number of rides and temperature. So I um, think, yeah, so I, I, what I was planning to do, oh, you know, I don't know if you guys want to talk about the um, the um, model evaluation and comparison. Yeah, but I think the, that's. Yeah, the, so this, is, this, is, this obviously is, is really important because like with most things in and, and model fitting, it's it's not the absolute values or the, you know, whatever, there's no numbers that are going to tell you whether or not your model is good or not. It's really about comparing it to other pl plausible models like they do here, right? So we have um, just a simple um, temperature, simple location. Um, we have multiple predictors. And then this is just our null model, right? So this is just our that's friend. Everything. That's just that's our friend. Everything. That's just our friend. Oh, oh, that's right. Oh, sorry. That's right. Actually, yeah. So this is this isn't this is all of the predictors, which I guess would be as we saw it up above. It's like nine a.m. temperature, nine a.m. Yeah, a lot of things. Um, okay, yeah. So I didn't. Um, yeah. So we. What, what's your what's your guys' take on this here for the sort of posterior predictive checks? I would I would, I would say like what three and four look the yeah. best um, yeah. fitting to the data. Cause it like captures that, like, there's like that little bit of bimodality, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. like the first two just kind of assume that it's a lot more normal. Um, yeah, whereas like the latter two actually like get that, um, that like second little peak by like to the right of the distribution. I would say probably like four seems to be the best. Although yeah. like, although like, I mean, this is just me like eyeballing it. It's like, it there probably is like other are other considerations right but like sure. maybe four <laughs> yeah, or four three looks, i mean they look pretty good yeah, both of yeah. Them. and you know one of the things also i don't and like once again this is still new to me but you know with um so we i think we have uh oh, oh yeah. yeah here we yeah, go here it's, it is so it's location um wind speed humidity pressure temperature and we're know. just yeah so that's it was out. actually yeah. Oh, sorry. I guess what's also interesting is that even though four like seems a bit better, it's like not by that much, even when yeah. you add in like all the predictors. So like it may not be worth it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So basically, yeah, just to kind of okay. So yeah, and we're as only as, using, as, as yeah. it gets into in this chapter, maybe not only not, not be worth it, but other things we may tell you is actually it's actually worse. Yeah. Because of the because yeah. of this uh, bias variance trade off thing, right? Yes, absolutely. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, we may be fitting better here, but then we take novel data and all of a sudden, yeah, we're not getting, you know, maybe this is better because, you know, we need this wiggle room in, in this you know, place or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then so, I, yeah, once again, I was hopeful to, to do all these um, in terms of the make these figures for another thing, but it just didn't happen. Um, so yeah, so these are um, you know just looking at sort of the predictive uh, models. Oh wait a minute, so so model. Oh, so they're, we're we're just looking at models one and two, right? So, um, yep. yes, okay. So this is uh, interesting because model one, right? It has these big fat error bars or right. big, fat predictive error bars, and that's because it has to cover both of those lines that we know are there, kind of in the interaction. That's not right, or not in the interaction yes. in the. Uh, the two, the better model three, I guess, would split those out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, and then oh, so there this, it is. Is, yeah, this is model three. three. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. There's narrower 
because uh, it doesn't have to fit both. Over, over oh, like right. Both. And, and yeah, doing, it's, 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 it's a weird observation I have when I was looking at this. I'm like, ah, I see. Yeah. So it's, yeah, this is, you yeah, know, this is, this is a parameter well spent, you know, it's like, yeah, to, yeah, to, to separate. Yeah, parameter location. well spent. That's a great phrase. <laughs> like that? great term as, a, as opposed to maybe some of these other things, right? So, um, so like we, we know that we know that throwing these two together is, is a crime against nature, <laughs> at yeah. least from a, <laughs> a statistical perspective, right? Oh, yeah. And so what about is, is, is high dimensional assembly too difficult to visualize? I mean, we could make, you know, I'm sure we could, if we wanted to be a big pain in the butt. But uh, yeah, we could yeah, do it. Different marginal plots or whatever. And we talked about cross validation, I think, previously. Um, I don't really have anything else to add on this. Um, um, well, but, here's where you can see that model three, right? Yeah. The one that we thought was, mm -hmm. you know, had only two parameters and does a good job, has a lower MAE than model four, which is everything. So model four is, might be overfitting a little bit already. Like, so right. that's another argument for model three to be the one we should choose here, right? Yeah. Because yeah. it also yeah. seems like, too, like, even with those additional predictors, like, there's no, like, lift, right? And, like, the fit, like, they're kind of indistinguishable. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, there's for all of the extra parameters that we've added, right? Um, we're not getting a lot for our money here, right? I mean, yeah, in terms yeah. of in terms of difference, or our, I should say, our resources, whatever. Um, yeah. So, okay. And then lastly, you know, bi bias variance trade off. I mean, I think this is. Well, before you jump in, I oh, sorry, sorry. mention quickly yeah. about the Lou, the ELPD thing. Yeah. I already looked into the ELPD thing, and it seems like it's a. a you have to, you know, what do you call it? Brain power, well, not well spent. Because why do I need this extra thing when I got the MAE, which is easy to understand, right? Right, right. Uh, M A D M A E M A E M A E, yeah. yeah. Right. So, and I think I looked into this a little bit because I was curious. So I just want to point this out. One of the reasons why this ELPD is so widely used is that there exists an algorithm called uh, crack, this Lou algorithm. Um, there's a way to do the leave one out calculation mm -hmm. for the ELPD without actually doing the leave one out. There's some mm. trick, um, oh. I forget what it's called. That's in here in the- Yeah. So like it actually makes it like computationally feasible. Yeah, it's easier to calculate than the MAE. We actually, no kidding, have to do the cross validation. That's you know, awesome. Cross validation for Bayesian means doing, you know, 10 <laughs> Monte Carlo, which is maybe fine when you're getting close to the end, but when you're trying to explore the model space, you're gonna be, you know, wandering the hallways getting coffee a lot probably <laughs> yeah for sure yeah my change i just wanted to i did fine. just wanted to point that out what's that i'm sorry robert what's no that? i'm saying it's like my shit the job would be like my chains are sampling i'm, I'm doing work i'm just waiting for yeah, instead of so. compiling that's the usual <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 i just want to point that out because uh it bothered me I'm like why are we doing this elpd thing it like seems hard to interpret i don't fully understand it and the well, you're a better man weird. than me because I didn't. I I just passed it over. To be honest, with you. <laughs> I was I was like, well, I know we're going to want to talk about cross validation, and I know we're going to talk about ME, and I know we're going to talk about bias and variance. But you now that you bias variance is an important topic. But no, but like, but now that you've said this, I'm actually like, wow, I'm going to go. I better go back and and do this this thing. Um, but yeah, no. So I mean, this is. I feel like, well, Robert, you're saying you do um like machine learning stuff i mean this is your life right i mean in some ways oh no i, I do know like the machine learning um, oh I thought, I thought, yeah why, why did i think you were doing something like or maybe you no, said that on no I thought, no i think it was ava yeah i, I think i'd said but i was like all i remember is what i did in class oh. <laughs> right with, like the cross validation all of that oh, okay um, no, i want to do more machine learning but yeah i know don't we all right <laughs> i feel like we're not really cool until we start doing more exactly. machine learning. exactly i mean um, <laughs> So it's that's why, uh, we, that's why we call all this machine learning now i know it's like <laughs> it, it, it started out doing logistic regression but i finished doing machine learning and now i'm like a lot more expensive um <laughs> um yeah so <laughs> yeah very true. yeah i will say this like i don't know if you all have ever done any like polynomial stuff or like any kind of sure, all the stuff. Of that, yeah man I, I i worked when i worked at cleveland clinic we had this like huge data set of people um who have MS, but they have like different quantitative MRIs at like different points in their diagnostic history. And you got a lot of this stuff because there's a lot of like, um, like different lesions that happen in MS or different, you know, brain things. And so, yeah, this is, I don't know. Yeah. I, I haven't done this in years, but it, this, this whole issue of, you know, um, you know, where we, we did some split sample stuff with this and yeah, you, you get all creative with throwing all these, these polynomials in and, it looks really sexy on your on your uh, you know training set, and then 
test that is less impressive. Um, so yeah, That's, just real, yeah. So uh, what, did you have something? Sorry. I was just gonna say that was a great summary of the bias, bias various, bias various trade-off you just gave there. <laughs> Look yeah, how yeah. sexy <laughs> on your trading data, but then forget about all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like you'd rather, I mean, like it's, I think you just, I mean, even if you're not doing quote unquote machine learning, I think, yeah, you, we all have been sort of raised to, to, to distrust, you know, too well fitting data, right? If there's, right. you know, that's, it's like a, that's a red flag, you know, for us. Um, so unfortunately not all here, but um, I don't know, any, anyone want to take any stab at like, you know, uh, you know, I think we already kind of said this, I'll, I'll take the first one, right? So the more predictors we have, at least we can say, you know, um, well, we know it's 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 that we probably have a decent. Let's say our primary um, predictor of interest is not location, but it's you know uh, 9 a.m. temperature, and we but we threw in 9 a.m. humidity and wind or whatever because we want to really want to make sure that the effect of predicting you know the the, the you know the effect of 9 a.m. temperature on 3 p.m. temperature is indeed a temperature issue and not some other thing that perhaps right. was unmeasured. So. It's a, this is certainly a, a wiggling game because, um, you know, we can, the, you know, the more things we throw in there, the more parameters we, degrees of freedom we're using up. And also, you know, as, as they point up above, you know, you get to this point of diminishing returns, like we saw with that model five. Um, oh yeah. So just real quick, this, some of this is kind of, this is, it feels like, especially for all the stuff you guys are doing, it seems foolish, right, um, to, to bring up. But so we have three cars, three, three or excuse me, four brands of cars. Um, and it looks like, so Kia is the um, reference. And so one, two, three is Ford, Sub uh, Subaru, and Toyota, I guess. Um, Am I wrong? I Ford's, Ford's the baseline or reference. <gasps> oh, excuse me. Sorry. So whether or not the cars are, sorry, I just saw this and I stopped at Kia's. And so I thought, I thought that was, okay, you're right. So your Ford is, to Ford is indeed, yes, you're, you're correct. Forgive me. Uh, so is the reference. Um, so then B2 would be, what's that? Kind of. Um, Subaru. Subaru. And then um, the, the, uh, What's what's our what's our uh, um, our our intercept mean here? It's a Ford. Ford, yeah, right. Ford. Yeah, right. The reference. Right, right. Sorry, I I feel like this. <laughs> I feel like if, if we had some more students in this group, that we it would be a little bit. I would feel less bashful about wasting our time with this. But um, yeah, I don't know. I I uh, I was gonna even do some of the sketching stuff, but like I just it got away from me. Um, but yeah, I understood. Yeah, no, I think, uh, yeah, and then I, um, yeah, I started this, this was, I'm, I kind of want to get back into this and then try to, to do this and to try to compare all these models and do all that stuff, but I just, I ran out of time, but um, yeah, so that's, that's my, uh, that's the best I got for this week. Um, so now we're in, well, actually, no, kind of going yeah. through the chapter like that was fine, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I actually, I, I haven't really used the book down thing that much because, um, well, I just, for whatever reason, I kind of just wanted to, like in the past, I would just make up my own little slides and copy and paste little things I wanted to raise. And but I, this time I was like, well, I'm going to go into that thing. There was no, there wasn't even any notes for this chapter. So from like, I guess oh, there, was it. there wasn't. So yeah. what happens is some of the cohorts, they, um, they're using like other things like, and they can, anyone can, by the way, I think, you know, you can use PowerPoint if you want to, or you can use, I, no, it doesn't, you can use anything you want to in design or some people are using Quarto, which this particular, you know, he, I think the book clubs are going to move to Quarto at some point is my understanding. Man, but. It's, uh, the more, I, I'm, I'm still a novice, but man, everything I'm reading and hearing is, if you don't get on board, <laughs> yeah, I think your so, life is, sure. is going to get limited, but um, so uh, next is a Poisson and negative binomials. Yep. I kind of wish in hindsight that like I did this one instead because I, I actually, being a social scientist, we only really do like psychologists, we typically are only doing, you know, Gaussian and, and like logistics stuff. That's our bread and butter, you know? But then I worked in biostatistics at a hospital setting for almost three and a half years. And yeah, so things like um, length of you know, hospitalization, um, you know, number of days on ventilators, those are all like 
plus on things or negative by depending on whether or not you're um, you have uh, inflated um, you know zeros like so whether you have more zeros than you you, you know maybe you would expect based on a plus on model but anybody oh, you know I yeah. guess. Yeah, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that because I've actually there is another way to handle the inflated zeros, and that's just like add in a another term, right? Rather than use a negative binomial. Yeah, you know I did that before. I, did, I had to use that for a model one time. I didn't use a negative binomial study. I just added in a probability of being like in a total belief in class that you know yeah. zero. Because yeah. it's different with a negative binomial. It's not just an inflated zero. It's actually a, a different kind of. It's a wider variance, right? So, you got like a yeah. peak at zero that's a little different right yeah well the yeah they talk about this but it's interesting yeah there's thinking about that when i read the book i'm like what about this weird case where you just have like extra zeros well right so there's two issues with count so count models are like you know what we're talking about so plus on negative binomial yeah. and then also there's a thing called quasi plus on which you know is another i, I forget now what it's been zero a while inflated. Yeah. Zero zip. inflated. Zip. Yeah, zip. Yeah. yeah. So you can have zero you can have zero inflated plus on, you can have zero inflated negative binomial. Oh, even through that. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So but then the, the, the main difference between plus on and negative binomial is this idea of over dispersion, right? So over dispersion. In, in, in plus on, it's it's like the mean is equal to the variance, right? But when the, the variance is larger than it's like you 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 have more dispersion than a plus on distribution would predict. So yeah, you bring on the negative binomial, and that's usually the best fix. I your idea sounds cool. I just that's like that's way too like Jedi for me to get into. Um, you know, in terms of I, you know, and also like I was doing this for doctors who are publishing in journals, and th these journals have kind of like standard. You know, this is how we solve. You know, over dispersion. Problem, yeah. yeah, I mean that's there's like. It's kind of like biostats is a lot of it is like legal precedence you know for why i chose this model versus that it's like you want to have evidence in the literature and i ended up like doing that. this zero inflated thing just i didn't even know about the negative binomial yeah <laughs> yeah way, yeah life. so i'm just making yeah. stuff up <laughs> yeah i was really lucky i had some great it mentors. was just for a sales thing so it didn't yeah. matter but, but really <laughs> anybody's Steve, lives on the line yeah you know? <laughs> what, what i will say i feel really bad about as a social scientist going back to like the 90s when i first started doing research is a lot of times like count variables we just would do normal distributions and that's like really bad now i mean i, I you know I, we just didn't understand i don't think we understood the medicine obviously has been way ahead on this stuff and that's but yeah. anybody uh, interested in taking this oh i, I already have it um so oh to, great yeah great. robert's doing it so. okay man we're getting we're getting well i don't know still got a lot to go but um, we're, getting, we're getting pretty far in the book i mean yeah. like mark is moving along so <laughs> yeah. yeah so <laughs> Oh, but fine. um i gotta eat lunch before a another yeah. meeting at one so um cool. but hey it's good i'm sorry we didn't have all the people but i'm sure we'll be yeah. hopefully we'll have her with us next week and um no, i mean I, again i just encourage people to do the exercises it really helps bring home the no, things. And if you have questions on them whether you did them in r or python doesn't matter you feel free to post them on there um, and we'll try to see if we can figure it out yeah <laughs> well next week gentlemen and uh, right. yeah, thanks for your help. I, I you definitely yeah, were <laughs> you were you were carrying me more than usual today, so I appreciate it. Yeah. Have a good right. have a have a good one. All right, see you guys next week. Bye.